Hello and welcome back to the shed. Um, just a quick video, I've been using some epoxy putty, epoxy resin or putty in this instance, um, JB Weld. Um, and it literally sticks like shit to a blanket. <laughs> Um, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin, um, you know, but why? So I wanted to have a look into it and, and what exactly JB Weld is or what epoxy, epoxy resins or putties are. Um, so, I mean, really, that, they date back to the 1930s. Um, apparently a Swiss researcher was experimenting um, with materials to use in making uh, people's dentures. Yeah. I know, horrific. Imagine epoxy resin in your mouth. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Ow! Um, but, like, since, ever since then, these epoxy compounds basically served, have been serving as, as adhesives, coatings, um, structural resins, from anything from surfboards to aeroplane frames, literally wherever toughness and durability really matter. Um, I mean, believe it or not, JB Weld uh, adhesive, um, the JB Weld one was actually invented by a truck mechanic. It's like, where's my truck? There's my truck! My truck! Um, as, a, as an alternative to uh, torch welding. Um, and it's, it's, it's now become, you know, the staple diet of, of many a DIY toolkit. Um, and it really will form an industrial strength bond uh, to to many surfaces. Um, it, it sort of comes in, I don't know how many of you know, you've obviously used it before, but it comes in separate tubes, basically. I've got resin and then you've got a curing agent. Um, you sort of squeeze equal amounts of both, as you know, mix them together and let the chemical magic begin. Um, but I've recently been using a putty, uh, which is basically exactly the same. Um, you've got an outside layer, um, and you've got an inside layer that basically they need to be molded together um, before you kind of like apply it to whatever you want to whatever you want to repair really and I was really really impressed um, I was basically sat in the shed um, drinking my coffee um, after applying uh, some of it to a fuel tank um, that I'm working on and it, it just dawned on me and, and I thought you know what is this stuff actually made from anyway so you know I looked it up and um, researched a bit of it just just to see but it's it's quite a chemical party going on i can tell you um i mean the compounds involved in it are quite interesting um you've got so what you've got bisphenol a uh which is epichloride hydrin um basically the resin in jb weld epoxy is uh bisphenol a you know, it's that, that BPA um, combined with the sort of garlicky smelling um, epichlorohydrin. Um, chemically, the molecule is, is, is a chain with sort of little carbon and oxygen triangles. And uh, they're actually called epoxide rings uh, on the ends. Um, and that's kind of like where the sticky action happens, if you like. Um, so that, that's, that, that's one of the chemicals and the list goes on. You've got crystalline silica, which is basically quartz. Um, it, it's added to the resin um, f to give it body and viscosity, um, without which the goop, if you like, would be too fluid to uh, adhere to the surface and set properly. Uh, more like JB Melt than JB Weld, like that. Um, you've, got, um, you've got carbon black. I mean, the name says it all. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of the carbon black is made up of like sooty bits, which are sort of my, produced by burning hydrocarbons. It gives the resin its um, kind of like inky colour in the middle, especially in the putty. It runs through the middle of the putty before you mix it. Um, you've also got calcium carbonate, which is a cheap filler, basically found in sort of the resin and the, the hardener. Um, like the silica, it gives... Um, it gives the product sort of more volume um, while basically decreasing the cost of the product per ounce. Um, but, you know, works well. 
Um, another one you've got is a bit of a tongue twister. It's tetraethylene uh, pentamine. This is the curing agent. It basically contains um, amine groups that break open the epoxide rings. Uh, so basically the carbons um, can hook up um, with the amines, nitrogen. Um, you've, it's like one uh, TEPA molecule um, can lock onto four epoxy resin chains. Um, The other ends of those chains um, can bond um, to other TEPA molecules. And, you know, all that sort of cross-linking forms a super strong um, network structure, and that's the key, really, of how it works. Um, it's a thermoset polymer, basically. And when it hardens, JB Weld can apparently withstand forces of nearly two tonnes per square inch. I think that's right. And temperatures um, up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. They've done studies, you know. Um, which is impressive, really impressive. You've then got DMP30, um, that's the curing agent on its own. It's kind of a um, lackadaisical sort of um, uh, open in the rings. So epoxies often use accelerators like this one. Um, DMP is short for uh, 246 DMP30, is short for um, tristimethyl amino methyl phenol. Um, bit of a tongue twister as a react reactive um, hydroxyl group basically hanging off the side that helps uh, uh, rip those epoxide rings open like Christmas presents it's really a, a real strong um, bonding agent um, you've got ben, uh, benzyl alcohol um, basically a colorless liquid um, again modifies viscosity and acts as a solvent to help the curing agent sort of disperse during the mixing and like DMP30 um, benzyl alcohol also has a uh, hydroxyl group that can trigger um, the curing process. So um, it's put in the hardener tube and also I believe it's part of the putty. Um, all of these are part of the putty as well, just a different way of mixing them and applying them. Um, titanium dioxide, I mean this stuff adds more body to the mix basically and it turns the uh, curing agent um, a, a colour coded white I think. Um, but mix with the black resin and obviously you get that famous grey colour that we're used to seeing um, with the JV Weld, which is the same as the putty as well as the, um, if you were to use the actual, um, the gel if you like. Um, you've got barium sulphate, again more filler, more filler uh, BASO4, it's, it's radiopaque, which is why they make you swallow it um, if you ever go for an x-ray on your innards. Um, if you've ever had a barium enema, you will also be unpleasantly familiar with this compound. Uh, however, please do not attempt uh, either with JB Weld because it could get rather messy. Um, so there you have it, really. Uh, you know, next time you want to plug a leak, repair a weld or pay a visit to the x-ray department, um, make sure to take some JB Weld with you. So there we go. That's what's in it. Thanks for watching. And uh, see you again soon. Cheers.